Good evening, and welcome to Ram Sports at 6. I'm Alex. And I'm Ryan. What's new, Alex? See over Lambda. Well, we have a great show for you guys tonight, because today is Super, Super Bowl Sunday. Sunday. Even though it's only Saturday. I think they can kind of get that. Yes, well, anyways, we have an amazing show for you tonight. We're going to watch the New York Giants versus the New England Patriots as they vie for the title of number one in the epic showdown that we call the Super Bowl. In fact, here's Melanie Partlow, our third cast member, with the first clip. What's going on out there, Melanie? In this play, Manning attempts a long pass to Manningham across the field, which ends in Manningham dropping the ball. And what appears to be a block from the Patriots is actually a lack of jump from Manningham. Now let's take another look at this clip to see what actually happened. We can see here that Manning throws the ball at around the 37-yard line. He and the ball line up at about the 20. That means that the ball traveled approximately 39.35 meters in the X direction. We also know the height of Manning and the jump height of Manningham and that it took 2.1 seconds for the ball to reach Manningham. We could also determine that the X velocity was about 18.74 meters per second. That was easy. Then we used kinematics to determine the Y velocity, which was about 10.46 meters per second. We also used trigonometry to determine the angle that Manning threw the ball at, which was about 29.17 degrees. Manningham could have jumped either an inch higher, or Manning could have thrown the ball at an angle 0 0.02 degrees less than he did. Either of these would have resulted in a successful play. But I do hear that we have a second clip coming in. Yes, we do. So let's turn it over right now to Melanie Partola. Here we have another Manning-Manningham play. After a deep pass, Manningham catches the ball and barely touches the field before being knocked out of bounds by Patrick Chung. After a challenge, the play is determined by a referee to be a complete pass. In this clip, Manningham and Chung collide and relatively stick together, which means in physics, their collision was inelastic. That means that their X and Y velocities are going to stay the same. Now, Ryan, what exactly are those velocities going to be? Well, we can determine the velocity by using momentum. We determine the X and Y velocities of both players in this clip, as well as their masses. With that, we can find their X and Y momentums. And then we can find the total momentums in both the X and Y directions. After that, we can use the Pythagorean theorem to find the directional momentum they had in the end. In the next clip, we have a new player, Ahmad Bradshaw. In the play we're about to see, Bradshaw receives the ball and seemingly strolls past the Patriots' defense, then goes even further to mock their poor defense by falling flat on his butt into the end zone. He actually was trying to stop himself from going into the end zone. If he did this, the Patriots would have just enough time to score one more time and jump ahead. But why couldn't Ahmad stop? Great question, Ryan. In this situation, Ahmad has a certain velocity, a certain mass, and a certain amount of time that he must stop within. We know that the force he must apply on himself is equal to his mass times the change in velocity times the change in time where that velocity, change in velocity occurs. Since he has a high mass and a high velocity, and he's trying to stop within a very small time frame, the force is very, 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 very big. When we plug in the actual numbers we found, Bradshaw applied 351.11 newtons force on himself. We can also look at this play through the lens of work. We use the equations for kinetic energy and energy of work. And we also use the law of conservation of energy to determine that the kinetic energy he had at the seven yard line would be mostly converted into work by the time he actually stopped himself. To find out the force he had to push on himself to actually do this, we set the change in position to be less than or equal to the distance between him and the end zone. We then used the equations before to solve for the force that Ahmad had to apply on himself. 
This was about 757.01 newtons, or around 170 pounds of force. As we can see from the numbers, the actual force Bradshaw pushed at was about one half what was needed to stop before the line. That is why he fell over into the end zone. Looks like our time is up now, though. This was such an exciting Super Bowl. It was full of so many exciting plays and the physics that's always there. Well, Mr. Sweeney, it's that time again. Well, we had a really interesting show today, Super Bowl and all. We definitely did. We traveled across the fields of momentum, impulse, kinematics, energy, force, and work. Join us next time on Ram Sports when we dive deeper into the field of underwater basket weaving. Really? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. This was Ram Sports at 6.